a common discussion topic among thought leaders and consultants in reliability and maintenance centers on why do plants have such a problem implementing best practices and getting the results of best practices and reliability and maintenance when this information has been known for decades. Why is this not in every plant? I'm telling you, I have not been to, to a conference or had a really heart-to-heart -heart meeting with another consultant or plant manager that has not uh, discussed this question. It's very common. Uh, it just happens all the time. So what is missing? So I've answered this many times. Number one, uh, I've stated, hey, there's uh, most uh, consultants and most um, deployments take three to five years to get results. And that's just broken. That won't work in today's instant gratification society where plant managers need to show quarter over quarter improvement, but yet we keep doing it. Despite that track record, this is what if you do start a reliability journey and you want a pathfinder or a consultant that is experienced doing this to help, this is what you ask them to do. This is what you pay for. Here's 27 best practices. Let's train everybody on them. Everybody else do something different. And, you know, maybe we'll get a result if we can hold on with this momentum for three to five years. And I have not encountered the plant that can keep an effort going uninterrupted for three to five years to get a result. Uh, just doesn't happen anymore, yet that's still our path. Um, the third uh, answer I've given is 100%, and I don't say that lightly, 100% of leaders have a false view of reality of what their r &M culture is, a false view of, of their reality. I'm saying that based on my 35 years of experience being in 42 different plants, sometimes as a, um, as a plant manager, department leader, uh, area leader, and then uh, most re recently as a consultant internal to uh, the company I worked for, Alcoa, and then external, 42 different locations I've counted. And 100% of leaders are shocked when I can get them I set up an environment where they can see reality. They're shocked. Okay. So maybe your plant's different. <laughs> I say that uh, sarcastically. This false view of reality, I believe, is the most important obstacle to overcome. Because once you see reality, once you see the opportunity, the waste, what reliability and maintenance uh, best practices can do for you, it impacts throughput, it impacts. Uh, quality, impacts your cost, impacts morale, impacts safety. There's no better thing you can do as a plant manager than to get great at reliability and maintenance. My experience, uh, and this is really true at, uh, at capital intensive uh, organizations, but I've, I've never seen it not true, if that makes sense. It drives everything is this uh, your view of reality, and it's false. If you're basing your uh, decisions off your opinion, your experience, and KPIs, I promise you, you're making wrong decisions. Epictetus was a Greek Stoic, Stoic philosopher. I love the uh, study in Stoicism. Um, one of the things he said it is, and I'm going to read this specifically to get it right, it's impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knew. No, <laughs> it's impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Said differently, ego is the enemy. Ryan Holiday has a book by that title. I've read it. Excellent. Humility is the key to understanding. Ego is getting in your way. Ego, because you think you already know what's wrong with your maintenance and uh, engineering and reliability organization. You think you know it based on opinion, based on KPIs. I know what's wrong with my plant. I don't need any more information. Here's what we need to do. It's impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows, okay? So why is this happen, happening? Why do leaders 
act this way. Number one, it's a perception of control. They, you know, as a leader, you want to be in control. So I know what's wrong. Here's what's wrong in my plant. Here's what we're doing. I know reliability. Number two, the most, a lot of leaders, and this is a tendency that we all had. I had this. I must know everything and I must be the smartest person in the room. This is a daily battle for the leader to step back and grow other leaders. Let them be the smartest person in the room. It is a hard battle. Majority of leaders I know lose this one. Number three, fear of embarrassment is very real. Why won't a plant manager walk into the maintenance shop and start discussing a failure that's been happening on a gearbox or on a uh, chain or some piece of equipment. Why do they not want to go to the field? Too busy? If they thought it would add value, if you think it would add value, you would do it. Fear of embarrassment's very real. All these are bad reasons. These, these three reasons why, um, why we have a false sense of reality in our plants there, these aren't good reasons. The solution. I like to give solutions, okay? You can bend the, begin these tomorrow and they're all free. Free, 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 okay? Number one, hey, <clears throat> if you're an um, individual contributor, reliability engineer, technician, maintenance supervisor, planner, forward this video on to your leaders. Say, what do you think of this guy? Do you think he's right? Do you think he can uh, help our plant? And then... I've got 100 other videos. Uh, this is my 346th video. I've got a lot of them for you to look at. Uh, number two, KPIs and opinion are at best 50% of reality. 50%. You must add intense observation to your data set. Specifically, observation called chalk circle, where you expend at least four hours standing in one spot looking at a problem that you're facing. So if it's gearbox failures, motor failures, if it's efficiency of the crew, which you're planning and scheduling system, observe it for at least four hours, a whole PM. Your KPIs and opinion are leading you astray. You know, if you're an individual contributor, ask a leader to go to the field to see something. Say, hey, you know, come here. I wanna, I wanna go out and let's watch this PM. I think this is what's going on. We're not doing it with precision. We're cutting uh, uh, steps short because of a, some issue. It could be a safety issue or environmental issue or cutting it short. Uh, tell them, that, you know, the leader, you don't have to say anything. Just to ask, you know, if you want to talk, just say, why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Just ask questions and nod and grunt a little bit. Number four, add chalk circle to your calendar each week. Put four hours on your calendar every single week. Yeah, maybe you can only do it three weeks out of four, but that's better than what you're doing now. You will make better decisions with Chalk Circle as an individual contributor, as a group leader. I did this. And uh, uh, I guess it's number five now. Uh, I lettered these A, B, and C. That's why I'm at. I know I'm saying one, two, three, four, five. So number five, I think I'm on. Add Chalk Circle and call it Chalk Circle to your presentation. So if you're an engineer, Add chalk circle to your uh, presentation saying, hey, here's, the, here's my opinion, here's the KPI, and here's chalk circle data. And everybody's going to say, well, hey, Joe, what do you, what do you, what's this chalk circle stuff? Well, I went out and saw. And I uh, saw some new things in reality that were not in the, um, in the KPIs. For example, you may think you're doing uh, a PM on a piece of equipment every month, and you go out and observe it for three months in a row, and you find out they're not doing the whole PM and they're not doing it with precision. But you're we're gonna propose buying a new piece of equipment because of the mean time between failure on this piece of equipment and you haven't been PMing it. You only found that out by observation. The KPIs looked good. Your opinion was right. Wow, 50% right. Um, and number six, require chalk circle uh, data for decisions. If you're in a position of leadership, uh, run a 90-day experiment saying, guys, uh, any decisions we make, any proposals to uh, make changes to an outage, to buy new equipment, to spend money, require eight, 16 hours of chalk circle observation as part of that data set. Do that for 90 days. It'll completely change the decision you make. Completely change it. 
Most people, we don't have time for this. Let's make quicker decisions based on half the information and let's make wrong decisions and say, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Add chalk circle, you'll be right more often. Great career advice. If you're an individual contributor out there, best career advice I can give you, Add chalk circle observation to your data set, you'll be right more often. Dramatic results are possible in weeks if you know the problem well enough. I have hundreds of videos that can help you. Take a look at them. Um, a 10% reduction in spend is what I tell people should be very easy. That's a one foot putt to, to use golf terms uh, with using chalk circle observation. I've never seen a plant get less than that. Just recently, I got notice of, from a plant that said they re re uh, realized 30% reduction in unplanned downtime. 30% in the first year. That's not a run rate. That's what they, <laughs> and this was over 10 months. They realized 30% uh, reduction, uh, you know, from knowing the problem. All this is rooted in best practices, so it's a foundation for more foundation for more. It's not a, you know, hey, let's have a spike in results and then let's uh, let's see that drop off, which is what cost cutting does. If you cut costs, you reduce cost yeah, right now, and then 18 months later, everything uh, goes to hell. Chalk circle is always missing when I go into plants, when I talk with uh, maintenance managers, plant managers, engineers. It's always missing and you're making bad decisions. Fix it. Fix it. It's not. I gave you six free ways to fix it. Fix it. This is Joe out.